Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, November 5th, 2023. I'm Larry Rhodes or DJ Doubter 5. And as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. All day, all night, all right. All the time. WOZO Radio. <laughs> <laughs> and our special guest is Dread Pirate Higgs. Welcome, Dread. Oh, a special guest, yet. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah, always. Like <laughs> Digital Free Thought Radio <laughs> Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And commercially, we'll also talk about religions, religious faith, Pastafarianism, God's <laughs> holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non believer in your town, well, you just not. In Knoxville, here in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of 1,100 of us. We're the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. I'm going to tell you more about us after the mid-show break. Be sure to stick around. Well, Matt, what's our topic today? Beyond the 1,100 lost souls that exist now in the Tennessee area, uh, we are going to be talking about revisions, early revisions of the Bible, and ideas that, the idea that you know, necessarily the stories that we have, the Bible stories wait, we have. Wait, we're just wait. The one, go for it. How, how can how can the unerring word of God be revised? Because <laughs> <laughs> we only have the final revision. That's the problem. There was a bunch of uh, plots that just are left on the cutting room floor. I think what we have are the final versions that actually work. Well, probably have the final five versions because you can get the new uh, living Bible. You can get the old testament new testament of the king james Larry, let me let me get out the description of the show then all we'll get over the place it. let me get out the description of the show we'll get into it but the idea okay. is what would the earlier versions of these stories look like what would be the earlier drafts that god had tried that didn't work that are still on the cutting room floor and what and it, piecemeal how we got to the situation where we're at now it's going to be a really weird but fun topic of the show today however before we get into that topic how about we throw it up throwing dread power hicks for a weekly invocation Satanly, mm. our noodly Lord, who art in a colander, al dente be thy noodles, thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum, with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread, and forgive us our cussing, as we forgive those who cuss against us. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs. <laughs> For thine are the noodles, and the meatballs, and the grog, whenever and ever, Raw, Larry, I've been having some fun. <laughs> being pretty busy. Uh, recently came out with a new song, really happy with that. Posted, yeah, very nice. Special group, thank you, thank you, thank you. Was it called uh, 2 a.m.? Yeah, that was it. That was me, or you made it at 2 a.m. <laughs> oh, okay. One or the other, one or the other, right? Uh, the other thing I've been making is this weird. So, I've been watching this show called Gundam The Witch from Mercury, and I've had a really fun time watching a show that i felt has engaged me intellectually as well as just astonished me with the animation quality at the same time too highly recommended i watched gundam since i was like a teenager but i fell off of like cartoons and anime for quite some time got back into it and i was really impressed with this the the care of how they wrote written so well so many different women on the show it's like a female cast but it's it's not as it's not written for the sake of male entertainment like all the women have things to say, things to do, very, very strong purpose, very strong ideology. And it's just a very well-crafted show overall. And of course you get the giant robots, which are also awesome. It's just called Gundam? Uh, it's called The Witch from Mercury, but it's part of a franchise that's called Gundam. Okay. And and they also make uh, model kits for all their toys. So you can like, oh man, I love seeing this thing. I want to build it myself. And man, it's just so diligently put together. You don't have to use glue. You don't have to paint it. All the parts come in these frames that you just snip off and snap together. And it's just a really fun way to build a model. I wish uh, car man or car toy manufacturers, plane manufacturers to follow the same suit. Uh, along with that, went rock climbing yesterday. Had a good time, <laughs> but I didn't do as well as I wanted. Um, I wasn't able to top as many boulders as I wanted to. And so I fell a little down, but I did feel like I made progress in terms of trying to 
hit a higher caliber of climbs. So like I'm pushing myself to do harder stuff. So even if I don't get as accomplished, at least I know I'm trying to do harder things. And so that made me feel at least a little bit better. But I did find this thing called a kilter board. I don't know if you've ever heard of one of those things before, but it's a climbing board that has light up um, holds and you can program your phone with an app to basically download uh, a set of holds from a library of holds. They're all available because all kilter boards around the world are more or less the same. And you can functionally train yourself on a customized path and then share your 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 path or your rock climb setting to other people to give critiques on and improve or modify your climb or change the angle of the wall like you can you have a standardized way to retrain uh of a wide variety or wide gradient of difficulties as you get from one level to the next level and so i'm working on that and i was almost thinking man it would be great to have a place where i could basically have my own yeah it's i'm um, looking it up it's like 12 feet by 16 feet yeah 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 it's it's a big thing yeah they make some that are also like seven feet by like four feet too so you could even have one inside your kitchen if you wanted to wow. but like if you got a home there's an option for it and i saw some for that so if i was ever planning on getting a home that'd be like one of the things i'd be thinking about uh larry how have you been oh fine i'm just taking it easy uh, Take still waiting it for easy. Yeah, waiting for my knee surgery to come up. That'll be Thanksgiving week, so I'm I'm gonna have a good Thanksgiving lying around. Nice. What kind of surgery? People are you wait on about? me. Huh? Is it a uh, new oh, re knee replacement? Knee replacement. Knee yeah. replacement on one or both? One. Just they don't one. recommend you do two at a time now nowadays. Okay. 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 Going full cyborg. We love it. We love it. We love it. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting a head replacement next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Re resistance is futile. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, Dread Power Higgs, we'll throw it up to you. How you been? Uh, not too bad. Uh, last week, I traveled down to uh, another city there to do my emergency medical responder uh, upgrade. So now I'm qualified to work on an, on an ambulance nice very oh, actual, on an actual very, ambulance very so cool. you're calling from it an actual out, ambulance right now uh no i'm calling from my mtc but I uh, see. you know this this uh upgrade of course it means more money and um and we have to go through a licensing board so i have to do that in january and then that will put me in I won't be in a truck. <laughs> I'll be I'll be in a like a medic shack, you know, with you know, which is basically a, you know, it's you know a suite, right? So it's got a bed and a bathroom and a kitchen, yeah, TV and all that good stuff. So, and that's where I would stay. Is it true that so, Canada, yeah? So it's definitely. I was wondering, is it right. true that in Canada the ambulances have sirens that warn other cars that they're coming, and they don't just scream "Hey, get out the way" like they do in America? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's so yeah, polite. have those, and sometimes people pay attention. You know? so that's, <laughs> that's an extra bonus. It could happen. <laughs> <laughs> it could happen. Yeah. But I, uh, yeah, yeah. So um, I just got back uh, yesterday. It took me. It was a six and a half hour drive hmm. and then uh, i had to get my my unit here i had to get it ready and then i had to drive out to camp um last night and then this morning i was here bright-eyed and bushy-tailed nice but Wonderful. this is great because uh because it's eight o'clock here hmm. um we don't do time change in, uh, in fort st john so i see um, so it's eight o'clock for me, which means when I showed up here for, you know, uh, before seven thirty, uh, you know, I signed everyone in and, and I'm all clear. And, and unless I get paged out for an emergency, uh, I should be good. Very good. Cool. Good. I can only hope that yeah. daylight savings time becomes increasingly more unpopular in the U S that we, yeah. we can effectively get rid of it. Uh, but if, yeah. you, if you get called out for uh, some kind of kid with an emergency, you need to wear that hat with you when you go. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got. A, by the way, for the radio audience, he's got a tricorn hat on. So. Yes, think of it as like yeah. a pirate hat if yeah. you don't know what a mm -hmm. tricorn is. Well, yeah, yeah. and and just uh, you know, I 
I went, I was in class with uh, 11 other people and three of them were Sikhs all wearing uh, their, turbans, their religious right? head headwear. Yeah. Their religious headgear. So uh, mm -hmm. yes, I, I would actually wear this in the ambulance on Fridays as per my uh, consistent with my religious beliefs. So good. As cool. you should. Uh, I wanted to throw out a topic for today's show that's a bit heady. So hear me out. Unerring Word of God revised. What do I mean by that? The idea that the version of the Bible that we have or the version of the Word of God that we have is the unerring word because it's only the final version. And that there was, in fact, multiple instances of many different Bible stories that just didn't make the cut to get into the Bible. Earlier attempts by God to get his point across that didn't hit the mark potential failures on his part that he didn't want to advertise. And I can throw out no better ex example, and we can use this as a model moving forward, than the Adam and Eve story. We know that Adam and Eve, forbidden fruit in paradise, talking serpent, explaining to Eve, you should eat this thing, it's good for you, and Eve doing it, being, uh, con uh, what is that word, uh, sent to the dark side by the ability to think for herself. We, we know women aren't right. to do that. Mm -hmm. And then finally, coercing, coercing e uh, Adam to do the same thing too what if that was just the final version and god in his attempt to maintain paradise first made like a uh a forbidden diamond that he buried a, a thousand miles underneath the the surface of paradise and was like don't you dare dig up that forbidden diamond and adam and eve look at each other and they're thinking well we don't have any digging tools so yeah that's fine that's fine with this like and god's like dang it they were supposed to dig up the forbidden diamond <laughs> I made this. I made this trap too hard. I've been <laughs> foiled. Yeah. It, whatever you do, My don't go to the. Don't get, don't get the apple from the, the fruit from the tree on the moon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, don't go to the, get to the moon. And Adam we we were like, "Well, moon. we don't have spaceships, God. So, like, I guess yeah. good, good, good move, good job making this <laughs> trap door in paradise so far out mm -hmm. that we'll never fall down it." And God's like, "Die, ah, ah, no, That's a good point. That's a good point. I should have mm -hmm. made this easier." But wasn't the moon thing the premise of uh, 2001: A Space Odyssey? Really? Oh, when they yeah. Found the obelisk on the found moon. The obelisk on the ah. moon, which okay. sent and, off and a signal. It can signal. only happen when they have the technology to do to it. To reach right? the, moon, the moon. Okay, okay. So now we have another example where they said, "Okay, well, I'm just going to put the forbidden fruit on a tree, but I'm going to put it a thousand feet up on the tree." And Adam and Eve are like, "Well, we don't have climbing equipment. And that's really high to climb." And and for whatever reason, our bodies keep getting scratched and scraped up because we're not wearing yeah. clothes. We don't. And we didn't come from monkeys. We didn't come from monkeys. God, he's <laughs> like, "You made us in your image." He's like, "Oh, dang yeah. it, you got me again." Oh, yeah. geez, this isn't going to work well in the Bible. I need to make this so easy that you guys can just reach up and grab the thing that I told you not to reach up and grab right. and, and eat. And so he makes the fruit at arm's distance yeah. on a low branch yeah. of a tree, and even then. Adam and Eve are like, well, you told us not to eat it, so we're not going to eat it. So, and God's like, God, oh, me, darn it. I have to make <laughs> another animal to point in the direction. So he makes a serpent that's like a long pointy yeah. serpent that's the pointing at it. And he's pointing at the forbidden fruit and still Adam and Eve aren't eating it because they're like, well, he doesn't talk. He's just pointing at the fruit. Like all these animals are pointing at something. It's like, okay, fine. I will make a talking snake just for you just so you can eat this forbidden fruit. And so he makes a talking serpent that's like, hey, but, isn't this thing amazing? <laughs> and and he, was able to, free? he was able to share the truth of it with him, Dan, too. Yeah, it's a damnation buyback guarantee, well, I guarantee you. Well, go on ahead. Well, here's here's a here's the thing, right? Is they, mm. you know, when God said, don't eat from the, the don't eat the fruit, mm. lest ye surely die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So God lied. And the serpent told them the truth, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, serpent yeah. said, Oh, you won't die. And they didn't die. True, so, true. You know, the bad Serpents guy was the... telling them the truth, the good guy was telling them a lie. Yeah, the whole thing about the Bible is it doesn't it doesn't strike me as a story that was written by a good guy trying to be good. It's like a bad guy yeah. who's so convinced that he's good and is very unfortunately. <laughs> convinced a lot of people that he is good but it's the it's the autobiography of a tyrant more or less no, well yes. to me to me it's written by people who was writing a story about a guy who's so powerful he can make you do anything right and right, if you, right and if you yeah. if you don't don't obey then mm. the punishment is is incredible terrible not only will he punish you but he'll punish the rest of and it's humanity. eternal yeah, yeah forever and yeah. and generational it's it's yeah. it's sickening 
But you got infinite Adam punishment for finite crimes. Right. You got Adam yeah. and Eve during that paradise. They have a fruit that's now at arm's length. They have a talking snake that's like, you need to eat this thing. I'm calling your name. I'm talking to you in the la one language you know. I'm explaining to you that this is the thing that you need to eat. And then finally Eve takes it, eats it, gives it to Adam. And God's like, aha, you have yeah. fallen into my trap finally once and for all. And he, so he even yeah. took it a step farther, walking around in the in the garden looking for them like he didn't know where they were. Right. This is an omniscient being. Adam, <laughs> Eve, where are you? Uh, why are you hiding? Like he, he's just playing games with them at that point. Mm. But now we have finally have a version of the Bible that like can be the unerring word of God because we finally have a draft of all this this weird mechanisms. This uh, what's the uh, Rube Goldberg device? Ask mm -hmm. yeah. layers of complexity <laughs> just to get two pieces of fruit into two bodies that you can then blame the bodies for because you didn't set it up for failure. They went against your word, even right. though they didn't have an awareness of what was right or wrong in the first place. That the, that's what the whole point of the forbidden fruit would give them the ability to recognize right from wrong, which is which is a strange thing to punish someone for after the fact, right? Like if you are not capable of understanding morality ethics understanding authority or understanding anything and you're just a you're just a an automaton just doing whatever god tells you to do and then you finally eat something that gives you the awareness of uh of yourself doubt sentience more morality consequences of your actions and now finally you're like oh wait a second this is a problem <laughs> let yeah. me give this to the one person yeah. i love yeah. and then god's like hey you weren't supposed to do that it's like you you didn't explain the rules in a way that we could understand them until we ate this thing, and now right. that we have eaten this thing, you can't you can't blame us for that. What's up, Larry? Right. right, it gave him the knowledge of good and evil, which is yeah. also the, the knowledge of right and wrong, hmm. and they didn't have that knowledge before they ate the before they were put to the test, correct? Whether they should eat the the whether yeah. it was right or wrong to eat the apple, and you know, or it's, disobedience. You know, go for it. Go for it. Jeff. What it comes down to is. How can people still be so silly as to believe that story? Right, right. I know. Well, because right. one, okay, good point, Dredd, because people wrote that story trying with the impression of this is what happened, right? Meaning that there was a point in time where people did not have enough frame of reference or literary understanding of just like basic good ways to write stories or at least an awareness of how other people think to make a story that's so relevant to today's reality or understanding of how things operate in in terms of how we understand the world today that if you were to take someone who was born today and you put them in the middle of a desert <laughs> or like a forest or just somewhere where they have no interactions with other people and you close off their interactions with different kinds of people and different kinds of mental thinking or or ethics or moralities or perspectives etc they can come to the conclusion that this is real because they have nothing else to reference it off of because all it takes to believe something that's not true is just a low standard of evidence the people who wrote the Bible had the same affliction today as people who are born in a society where it's not inclusive or are integrated with many different kinds of people. They are closed off to other perspectives in such a way that their standards of evidence are super low mm -hmm. because they never had a chance to challenge them. It's true for the people who wrote the Bible, and it's true for the people who still believe the Bible up to today. And the way you get out of that is by reading more books understanding different people's perspectives, integrating yourself without ego and understanding that, hey, you don't understand everything in the universe. And the universe is actually a really big place. And as you understand that more and more, you realize, oh, geez, all these small things that I've come to put a lot of reliability in and confidence in are just facile models that have no impact on the greater realm of of unknowns that exist in the universe. And it becomes more and more obvious that it was written by people who are ignorant of yes. modern scientific fact in the natural yeah. world. Yeah. 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 The fact that they have to yeah. use fairy tales to explain yeah. things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, the only thing that we can be certain of is that agency is, is something that is self evident, mm. but that it has to be a, an invisible being is not self evident. I mean, if if there was really a God, why would you need missionaries to go spread the word? Mm. It would. It should be just right. evident that yeah. there's an omniscient be being out there, and and if you're in the middle of the forest uh, with no people around you, it should just come to you that, hey man, there's clearly a, 
you know, an omniscient being here running this thing because it can't be otherwise. Yeah. But that never happens. But, you know, cult cultures are introduced to uh, religions. They're not spontaneously generated. But right. on top of that, we're still trapped, if you were to follow the Christian model, in this weird Rude Goldberg device of strange yeah. circumstances falling on top of each other towards the end goal of having God have a bunch of people worship him at the end of the day. Like the whole setup from paradise with Adam and Eve is a domino effect that leads towards people worshiping God in heaven with him. And I'm, and I always think to myself, why didn't you just make that from square one? Cause you already made, you know, you've proven you can make automatons. You've proven you can make a universe. Why did you make the paradise with the talking snake to the Jesus to world war one to where we are now with internet? Well, all these, all these random things just to get to like the point where you have billions of people worshiping you. Like, is that the end of the goal? Couldn't you just done that from the start? Well, that's not counting all the suffering that's going on, you know, through everyday's lives well, of all of those people before yeah. they get there and, and the end of the world. Yeah, and Larry, you're only thinking about one planet suffering. Like, we live right. in a universe filled with multiple galaxies. There's suffering potentially all across. Potentially, yeah. Billions of different planets around the universe. Yeah, it's all for humanity. <laughs> it's all for right. the humanity and just these mm -hmm. chosen people yeah, yeah. somewhere well, in it's, Mesopotamia. It's, it's, like, it's like any good sales pitch, right? Yeah. You create a problem, <laughs> and then you sell the solution. And that's what religion is all about. Okay. Okay. Create, create a create a center and say, well, the only way you're going to get through that is uh, if you believe in me, and uh, I've got the solution for you. Drink this. Oh man, it's it's an interesting story. It's an interesting story. Anyway, uh, Larry, do you have more time for another example? Yeah. Go for Great. It. Noah's Ark. We love it. It hasn't gone away, especially if you live in Kentucky. Um, speaking of which, I don't know about this too well. But I do know that the finances for the the arc that they build up in Kentucky are beginning to get a little wonky. Ken, Ken Ham's thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's getting a little wonky, and they're actually asking for state support to be able to offset the the costs, <laughs> operating costs for maintaining that. Arc. I am not surprised. Uh, yeah. I mean, how, how many? How well, much state the churches do it they, anyway, right? Yeah. How much state support did they have to have in the form of, of tax benefits and land grants just yeah. to build a to place begin. in the first? Oh, yeah. yeah. Think about right. all that land. Yeah. Think about yeah. all that land just to build a weird, weird boat. I've had people in Tennessee and even at the gym wide eyed with excitement say, oh, we're <clears> going to the ark. We're going to the ark. And I'm like, how do you how do you as a person who's like maybe, you know, older than me as an, a functioning adult? look at me with excitement and with and say that it just it blows my mind though i can smile back and just be like oh that's i'm happy for you because i'm happy for him but at the end of the day if it, it's just a sad it's a sad state either way though noah's ark you know built that boat to very specify parameters right what if what if we were going to talk about ted's boat or brandon's boat or billy's boat and you're asking me who's brandon who's ted who's billy these are all the people god went to before to try to build a boat but got the dimensions wrong <laughs> <laughs> he's like oh it's a little too narrow i can't fit pigeons on this boat and we gotta have pigeons all right all right let's, <laughs> next guy next guy next guy all right you made it to i gave you cubic oh i didn't explain the units very well you don't know metric system okay next guy next guy next guy and so like systematically just going from one person to the next frank's arc uh brandon's arc or brandon point two arc different last name uh melissa's arc he tried some women a couple of times he's just like uh you guys no you you made it way too big it's like god it's supposed to hold every animal on the planet i have to make it big it's like no you're supposed to make it to my specifications next person noah you're the only person who followed my rules congratulations you will be the person that has my my boat yeah what kills me is that at that time there were countries that had whole navies you know, China, Egypt. Um, oh yeah. You know, several other com company countries, uh, but they didn't survive. I mean, they had boats, they had big boats, but uh, we had to have one little ark with all the animals on it. Yeah, it's but the thing was, their names, story. Their names were too hard to pronounce. God was like, "Oh, I can't call this." Um, they were worshiping like, the wrong god. That's and what, you, uh, it's like, no, 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 no. We need like a guy that we can at least assume would be a white guy. 
nowadays. Like, <laughs> nowadays. He, he, that's the person I'm looking for to build his boat. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not going to have zebras swim across an ocean. <laughs> or kangaroos. <laughs> so it can't be an well, Australian. Yeah, can't be well, any... You're breaking up. The, the fact that it comes from the. Go ahead. That it comes from the uh, Gilgamesh. Mm. That it comes from yeah. Gilgamesh, yeah. Mm-hmm. which was like a thousand years earlier. Yeah. You know, it's, mm-hmm. I mean, it's just so obvious that, you know, it would be silly to, you know, say it doesn't, right? I suppose. No, we need, need to take a break. We're pretty close to the bottom. Yeah, of but the it hour. wasn't, it wasn't as bad a story. No, though I just wonder, like, how many boats were attempted? How many people did he go to? Before we found uh, 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 yeah. that always yeah. blows my mind. He's like, you only yeah. went to one guy. You're the guy who made the paradise fruit thing. And you're telling me you did that once. That was your final plan. You had to have gone to at least 30 other people. It's like, people are like, mm-hmm. I tried to build a boat, but I made it out of cheese. I made it out of spaghetti. <laughs> I made it out of noodles. Like, no, I told you wood. I told you wood. All right. Get go, right for, go for wood. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. I'm um, sorry. We're going to take a break here. This is the digital free thought radio hour and W O Z O radio. 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Okay. Hello, and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dr. Five, and we're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. <laughs> Excuse me. Let's take just a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 21st year now and have over 1,100 members. We have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top table, or if it's pretty outside, outside on the deck. You can find us online on Facebook, meetup.com, or at our website, knoxvilleatheist.org. Or you can just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. Start one. Well, Matt, where do you want to pick up? I wanted, to get, more... Club. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to get more into stories aimed at highlighting the idea that what we have as the Bible could not have possibly been the final draft. That there may, for the unerring word of God, we simply have many different attempts on the cutting room floor that we've probably never seen before, just by virtue of the fact that if we were made in God's image, we know that our final drafts are not our first drafts. And I also want to highlight another story that's not as popular among, uh, you know, criticizing funny stories from the Bible, but the Tower of Babel. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, this is a story about an ancient civilization that uh, God just said, hey, listen, uh, you're getting too close to me. <laughs> so this ancient civilization decided to... We need things. to back up a minute. Go for it. Um, the, they all, the bedrock of this is that all of the nations of the earth spoke one language. Yes. And that they were able to get together and do a massive earthwork called the Tower yes. of Babel. Yes. And go ahead. No. Yes. Uh-huh. So it's a bunch of people who all speak together, don't want to have their cultures get scattered across different places. They want to come together and they want to work together. And in fact, they have a group project that they're all really excited about working with. They're not under conflict. They're all actually cooperating with each other to do one thing, build a thing that's so big that it'll reach the heavens from earth. Right. And God, and God said, Oh, I don't like you guys working together. In fact, I'm going to actually purposely scatter you across the world and give you all these different languages and destroy the thing that you guys try to work together on because he's a loving God. (laughs) (laughs) And he's not afraid of you approaching him. And he's not afraid. So the ideas behind this was maybe, maybe. You have to imagine, like, we have so much more stronger, taller buildings nowadays, and we have, like, these super powerful microscopes that are telescopes that can see things. Right. There was no chance that, like, a building that was made back then would have made any incremental difference as far as getting closer to God. Yet, a bit of an overreaction on God's part. Though, he presents that as if it's his final draft of him being so awesome. So, like, what was on the cutting room floor? Like, was this a story of God literally 
existing like maybe a hundred feet above people and was just like hey hey guys how you doing don't get close to me I, i'm doing a party i have pizza it's not for you and the people were like <laughs> we want some of the pizza please we will build a hundred foot tower that's pretty easy let's just all get together peacefully in, in, accept everyone from everyone uh every different corners of the planet of, agree to the fact that we have a common interest agree to the fact that we can work together in in pleasant respectful conditions and and with no slavery involved or anything like that, just construct something as a uniform expression of our gratitude for one another and our ability to cooperate as a singular, you know, identity. Like, isn't that amazing? And God's like, no, it's my pizza. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> just stamps it out. It's like, and by the way, now you know French and you know English and you know Spanish and you know Japanese. And, and everyone's like, I can't understand that son anymore. Oh no, chaos. Man, what a, what a terrible what a what a funny story to host by a god that claims to be all good and benevolent so what's on the cutting room yeah. floor though i mean what what did yeah. you try first yeah i would say cutting room floor was maybe this is an uh, identification of god trying to hide hide the fact that he was so close to the ground and was available and had like a really awesome pizza party planned but he just didn't want any people to show up maybe that's it yeah yeah. God, God's on a crane pretending yes. to have a <laughs> Like there might have been a point in time where we were saying like we can't see a God, we can't he because he's you know, like we we want him more in his life. There might have been a point where he was literally just on a string and just like hovering around earth and just like, hey, how have you had wings? Yeah, yeah. yeah like are you angel. worshiping me yet? Okay, all right, yeah. all right, all right, all right, all right. It's like actually you guys are getting way too close yeah. to me. I gotta get out of here. It's too clingy. Yeah. Our but it, it is interesting how uh you know that god the the god of the babel story hmm. um is one that's kind of uh, elbowing his way into the crowd of all the other gods that people believed and pushing them out right, right? just assuming control hmm. uh, like you know uh like oh i think you put yourself on mute dread by accident yeah, yeah. Dump their way in there and uh, take over. I see, I see. Um, uh, and I always just consider it such a weird story because in the in the only interest that these guys had were to get closer to God physically, right? Which in my mind is not a horrible thing because you would have to, in order to put in the effort to build a tower like that, you have had to have at least believed in that God, right? And it's different people coming together to work together, which I think is also a good thing, cooperation. So like you have cooperation, you have people who are clearly vested interest in getting closer to God, yet God was like, nah, <laughs> just tears <laughs> it down and splits them apart. Knowing full well what happens when you when you do stratify humanity, or maybe it, it's, it's just part of the plan, but what a terrible, what a terrible story overall. It's one yeah. of those- um, Divide and conquer. Yeah, it's one of those stories when people like bring up the book of Job, for example, and they're like, and this is how awesome God is. Let me bring up the book of Job. We've had, I've had someone do that to me before on a, a radio uh, show before. Yeah. And I'm Bad like, why, yeah, <laughs> why would you bring up the Job book as an example of why God's good? Because it's literally a story of him betting with the devil on how much they can screw up a person's life that was a genuine follower of him. Yeah. Like there's nothing good about that story, yet you somehow interpreted that in the exact opposite way that anyone with right. any modicum of cri critical thinking would would come to that conclusion. Larry, what do you think? Uh, not only that story, but the story of Abraham killing his son. Yeah. I mean, that is a terrible yeah. story. Right. Uh, no, anybody that tried that today would be in, in, instantly arrested and sent to jail or a exactly. crazy Exactly. No, man. even even the well, book same with the same with the general mutilation, right? Like cutting right. off their skin on their yeah. on their pee pees. Yeah. But and as much as we kowtow to that, the, the whole story of Jesus is a human sacrifice of a guy's son for someone else who didn't but, ask or consent to it. Like the idea, sure, yeah, uh, it's very, like very, very, I didn't ask. Not, for Jesus not to mention it. the uh, the symbolic cannibalism, right? Sure, sure. Yeah, there's, there's just some really terrible things that eat my body, from. drink my blood. Mm, but yeah. also, like if someone took their son out on a lawn, got erected two pieces of wood and started hammering their son's body to that wood. And then a neighbor comes in like, Hey, what are you doing? Your kid's screaming out loud. Hey, it's like, don't you understand that I'm doing this for you? 
<laughs> They'd get arrested for an insanity. Uh, uh, You'll thank facility. me later. You'll thank me later. Or if you don't, I'm coming after you too. You're <laughs> next. So, you know, we know for a fact that we have higher, you know, uh, standards. Mor- morality. Yeah. yeah. But uh, Christianity, <laughs> you, can't, you can't turn a blind eye to this. Anyway, uh, I wanted to talk uh, another one. This is called Jonah and the Great Fish. Uh, you guys might be aware of this story. <laughs> yeah, I'm aware. You sure you're aware, Larry? You want to do a quick intro? What what's what's your name? Oh, well, I don't really know why he got into the fish in the first place. He didn't get into but, it; he uh, got swallowed by it. But okay, go for it. Yeah, well, okay, but why did God make him the fish swallow him? I don't know. Maybe <laughs> I think maybe his ship went down and he was at sea. But if anybody knows the story about it, me go for, go for it. Uh, so, uh, Dred, do you want to take a crack at it? Right. No, no, big fish. So yeah. jo- Jonah mm. was a guy who was essentially um uh, not a he was a prophet or he was a what do you call it a salesman of God, but the problem is he had to have a test of faith. And so he got he was on a ship, ship crashed or ship went through a big storm out in sea, got swallowed up by the it's called whale in some t- version of the text, but because now mm. we know how whales work. It's called great fish. And so in some versions of the book, it's called great fish. Here's the bottom line. Bible was not written in English or Latin first. It was a spoken word story. And we we point at things and try to come to our best conclusions and a lot of stuff. But either way, got swallowed up by fish for three days, got spat out and was like, thank you for that test of faith, God. I never lost faith in you. Now I'm even more confident. Overall, more of the story is regardless of whatever situation you're in, keep believing in God. However, what if that was just the final version that worked out? What if there was a uh, Ted and the Great Fish or a Jennifer and the Great Fish? And these are all just people who actually just got swallowed completely into the the, the big fish and never, ever came out. And they're like, God's like, ah, dang it. Another one. <laughs> <laughs> or a shark. Maybe he tried for shark first. Yeah, like maybe he would, sometimes he like, oh, that was, it yeah, yeah. Fish. that was the wrong fish. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. j- Jonah and the giant octopus, like, oh no, he yeah. pushed it down way too far. <laughs> like, we need a yeah. we need a fish that has like a big Pinocchio s stomach that maybe has mm-hmm. like broken pieces of ship in there, and and yeah. maybe it works sometimes, but they they stayed in the fish too long, and like God's like, ah, oh, they need food and water. Ah, uh, this is this is getting too complicated. I'm going to try again. This yeah, and a fish uh, whose belly isn't full of digestive juices. That would yeah, be good. yeah, 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 yeah. It's like yeah, I yeah. Need, I'm going to have to come up with a whole new animal again. (laughs) (laughs) And maybe it was a one-time use animal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, the Bible's filled with a bunch of one-time use. Well, and and they're all predicated on on the ignorance of of the natural world, right? Fueled by ignorance, but one-time use, yes. Fish have digestive juices Mm. that break down food. How, How else, you know, but they didn't know that at the time. Right. They had no clue. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They also they you know, of the many things they didn't know back then, but also the idea of you need to eat in three days or you need to drink water in three days, or you're gonna be yeah. in a lot at of problems. At least water, right? yeah. At mm-hmm. least water, at least water. And it can't be salt water. water. And it can't be salt water. It can't be salt water, no. Mm-hmm. So but yeah. again, um, you know, the the common excuse would just be, well, you know, it's yeah. God magic and it's God faith getting him through the situation. Fair enough, but how many other situations were attempted before we got to the point where we're at now, where we have Jonah and the big fish? That's that's what I wanted to see. So uh, cutting room floor, probably filled with a bunch of other animals and a bunch of other people who tried it. But when Jonah and the great fish got finally got spit out, now we have our conclusion. Now we have the one that works. Uh, throwing out next one, David versus Goliath. And you guys might be aware of this one. So David future king goliath just a big stud big huge guy or at least as big as you know stories will have it uh be claimed that but overall bully with a really good at melee weaponry and essentially started a fight with david who had ammunition or projectile based ammunition and it was supposed to be set up as a story of an underdog versus like a very strong warrior but eventually david won despite having much better weaponry and the best a uh, uh, tag team partner of all time. <laughs> God. Uh, God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Literally God. Literally mm-hmm. God versus Goliath. It was a tag team fight against just one dude with a sword. Not fair in the big, grand scheme of things, but 
what was left on the cutting room floor in this in this example? Because I could imagine some cases where they were like, Goliath was like, I don't want to fight you. Let's just do a uh, spelling bee instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or dodgeball. <laughs> yeah, let's play dodgeball. Let's like, listen, man, you're tiny. Dude. You want to just play dodgeball? You want to play some disc golf? We'll, and we'll sit on a game and just like, no, we got to fight to the death. We got to fight to this. Like, I don't know, man. I feel bad for you. Like, I won. I can't see that giant guy that you're talking about. But like, I don't know, like you want to just skip rocks for a level? It's like, oh, skip rocks? Skip okay, rocks. We're closer to something. <laughs> we're getting closer yeah. to something that I'd want to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dred, do you want to get back in? Earth the Dread. He's getting himself <laughs> on mute. Yeah. Oh, there you go. There you go. Can I done that? Have you done what? Did I mute myself? No, no, I muted. You had some radio oh. chatter going on in the background. Uh, the oh, I see. Okay. David and Goliath going on. Uh, do you think they tried out some other games? Like maybe they tried making some pasta. Maybe they tried a rap battle ahead of time. And God's like, not as marketable as a battle to the death. I don't know, David, why you're doing all these extracurricular activities. Let's just kill him. Just kill him. It's like, no, he's a really nice guy. He's inviting yeah. him to his friends. We got, <clears throat> we're going to play tic tac toe. Well, yeah. I mean, you, you, you made the good point that, you know, the whole idea is it's supposed to illustrate how the underdog overcomes, uh, you know, superior weaponry and, and, uh, you know, better odds. But of mm. course he's got the omnipotent God there with them. So how, how do you lose that one? I feel like it was sort of a situation where Goliath was, let's do a race. We'll just race. And then Goliath won. And Dave was like, okay, best out of two. And then they, you know, did arm wrestling. David lost again. It's like, okay, best out of three. It's like, man, how many times? <laughs> rock, paper, like, scissors. Yeah, rock, mm-hmm. paper, scissors. Yeah, rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Let's do this. And keeps losing. And God's just like, okay, uh, I don't know. What, I don't know what to do. Just kill him. Just kill him. It's like, David's like, you want to fight to the death? <laughs> Winner takes Saul after like losing 17 yeah. times. And then after he kills Goliath, God's like, that's the only story we're going to tell. <laughs> it's just that one. All the other stuff we're not talking right. about. Right. You lost the rap battle, yeah. the fashion walk, the dance battle. Like you lost so many times, David. You're so bad. I had to literally give you a gun <laughs> <laughs> for this to work. Yeah. You're gave to him a gun to a knife fight. You had to give you a gun to a knife fight just to make this work. <sighs> and that's the story that got into the Bible. Do you understand my perspective on the Bible right. now? Like I see every story like this in my mind. When I read the Bible, I'm like, how many weird things had to have happened before we got to this crazy, absurd conclusion? Of what we're at. Oh, yeah. Happening. Especially since they're oral stories and you know how a game of yeah. telephone tag goes or telephone right. where you just yeah. get a story. You think you understand it and you pass it on the way you understand it, right. but it gets changed and changed and changed. Right. And that's before yeah. it ever gets written down the first well, time. Well, you know, yeah, and and it's interesting to me because all these stories are are the Old Testament stuff, but I, I listen to a mm-hmm. lot of uh, Bart Ehrman, who is a New Testament scholar, and you know scholars have you know clearly determined that um, there are changes even within the New Testament over the space of two hundred years, not to mention right. mm-hmm. the thousand years that the Old Testament was around beforehand. Mm. Uh, you know, between first and second Corinthians, Paul goes through a change about what he believes the afterlife is going to be and whether or not he's going to be around and alive when Jesus comes back. Uh So these things were changing right on the fly as, as, you know, Christianity was uh, actually being developed, Right. you know, the significance of uh, the cross, the significance Mm of why, why Jesus had to die in the first place. Like, you know, was he just a rabble rouser that the Romans got tired of? Mm. And then they turned that into some great, you know, great story that of resurrection and afterlife and all the rest of it. Nobody believed that before. Like even the, the ancient Jews, they just figured, you know, you go to Sheol, which is, mm. you know, like a, like a, a damp, dark place that you're not even really aware of. Um, and then yeah. it transitioned into this whole idea, of, you know, hell and heaven and right. eternal life and bodily resurrection and all the rest of it. Right. So 
I yeah. wanted to throw. Yeah. I wanted to throw. Well, it's definitely it's changing. Even it's not even being left on the cutting room floor. It's included right in the Bible as contradictions right. that you can kind of point to and say that doesn't make any sense. Beside that, right there. Yeah. And Dred, I, I want to throw in another stick in this in this in this contraption of how we got the Bible. In that this English thing that we have, that's a book that's in everyone's home. If you were to go back. Now, let me see if I get my math right. 600 years and you had a personal copy of the Bible and uh, a church authority knew about it. Am I going back to not far enough? Let's say I go back a thousand years just to be safe. If you had a. You had uh, yeah, a no, that's about right. Yeah, okay. About, about 600, 700 years. Yeah. yeah you had a version Guten, of the Bible Gutenberg. and authority yeah, knew about it. You were being there. burned at the stake. You were being burned at the stake before. Because they didn't want, time, they didn't really want you to know what was in it. They that's, wanted you to under, to believe what they said no, was right. in it. The Bible that was the Catholic was, Church yes, for most Bible, of its history. Yes, yes. The Bible <clears> was effectively <throat> a book in Latin that was just read at you. You didn't even have to speak Latin. It was just a book that was read at you and then followed up by what a, an authority of the church would say it meant when they when they when after they rehearsed some lines to you at Latin. That's such a crazy scenario. Hey, Larry, yeah. what's up? Well, I was just going to say that yeah. um, change is not the, yes, well, got my math right. nice. change is not the only thing that that happened to the Bible over time. There's also exclusion. Uh, there are books, Gnostic Gospels out there that were not included in the Bible simply because the decision was made not to include them. I, I think it was at the Council of Nicaea back at about 400 AD. Mm. There are books of, uh, of Judah. There's a book of Judas. And yeah. Mary and Thomas. Literally, we, we don't see floor. those. Yeah. They just yeah. left them on the cutting room floor. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So you have basically a yeah. book that's. So parts I, and I pieces. just wanted to. Uh... So you have a book that's in parts and pieces left on cutting room floors. You also have a book that's written only in Latin. And then until, and then technology advances and people are like, I want a copy of this book. And they're being killed and burned for it because the church authority says, only we have those books until eventually the technology became so widespread that King James is like, you know, you can just have a book. In fact, make it in English and put my name on every copy of the book on the cover. <laughs> Call this my version. And so they have to say, OK, well, we have to translate from yeah. Latin to old English. That's that's rough because we don't even have we're going from a language that has very few words to one that is still developing as a language to begin with, because French is way more advanced than English at this time. Are you sure you want this in English and not French? Like. I want old English. I speak English. Okay, fine. And now we have to retranslate the book from old English to now. Like these are these are huge, huge wellsprings of information or or communication translations that we're going through. Just just from one jump alone, many things can change. So to take this in any yeah. form of literal truth is is a bizarre circumstance or just a woeful demonstration. So uh, w William Tyndale was uh, convicted of heresy in 1536 strangulated and then burned at the stake and yeah. that was for translating the king james bible translating the king james bible the one that already existed that was approved by the king into what language mm -hmm. well the, he no he he created the king james version of the oh, bible wow tyndale wow and then he was burned at the stake for it oh wow strangulated yeah. and burned at the stake for it not popular wrong time guys no, you know there's another book that king james wrote theoretically wrote uh it's about demonology as well it's called demonology <laughs> as well <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah 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 true okay larry how much more time do we have in this show this uh, crazy. we have less than 10 minutes but that okay. much anyway less than 10 minutes so here's i'm gonna do one last takeaway in that okay. Um, I do think that it's interesting how if we are, if we take the Bible as true and we consider ourselves as made in the image of God, we know that we don't jump to final drafts. We, we try things out. We're creatures of trial and error. We do our best and we try to learn from our mistakes as best as we can. One of the examples of the Bible, if I were to really take it and have this as like the true demonstration of like, what's the nature of Satan? What's versus nature of God? I have an example where Jesus is on a trek with his boys. <laughs> he goes up to the top of a mountain, says, you guys stay here. I'm going to the top of this mountain to continue to keep praying. And 
Satan comes up next to him, like the 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 evil mastermind himself. And Satan goes up to Jesus and says, "Listen, you don't have to keep doing this God thing. You know what's going to happen down this road. How about this? Like we both seen the plan. We seen the cutting room floor. You and I both know what's going on here. How about this? If you just worship me." Look down on this mountain. I'll have all these people worship you, which is what you want at the end of the day. You want people to worship you. And I'll give you all the riches and all that stuff. You can have that as long as you just worship me. And how how will that work out for you? It'll be pretty good. Get what you want, right? You get what you want. I get what you want. We both win, right? No wars, no, no suffering. Let's just do that. It'll work better. And Jesus looked at, at the devil and said, I'm not going to worship you, you dirty, dirty, <laughs> you, you dirty ape you you terrible human being and and satan just takes us all at face value and it's like and you know what he does after jesus like tells him off he's like okay he walks away that's the end of the story that is in the bible the story is devil asks jesus to worship him jesus tells him off and says no and the devil accepts it and doesn't punish him for lack of worship just says like okay it was a choice walks away continues doing his own thing jesus keeps doing his own thing and i'm stunned as a atheist now with the critical you know awareness that i have now when i'm reading the bible that god doesn't follow the devil's example with regard to worship because i would love to have a god that comes to me and says hey you should worship me and i'm like actually i don't know about enough about you to worship you and i don't want to worship anybody and god's like that's cool i'm just going to keep doing my own thing have fun and it just goes off like the flying spaghetti monster follows more or less the same principles. Yep. Why can't exactly. God get on that same page? Because that would, if anything, sub substantially improve, I think, the quality of understanding for a lot of religious people. If they could have a God that they could follow as far as, oh, you don't believe the same thing I believe? That's fine. I'm just going to keep doing my thing. I'm not going to force my beliefs on you. I, it was an option. I was asking you if you wanted to come to my temple yeah. or my church. How great you, that you, know what, you, you know what? You know what seems so just so bizarre in the light of uh, Hamas and the Israelis is that, of course, they all, all believe in God, mm. but you know, how, how come they haven't just haven't figured it out that God isn't answering anyone's prayers? Mm -hmm. That you know, he's an if he's a, if he exists, he is completely absentee. Because, you know, these people are just killing themselves wantonly right. <clears throat> in right. the name of God. But, you know, he's not paying attention to any of them. And I don't know why they just don't get it. Dread, have you ever had just, an MCT really, dad? Or like, uh, have you ever like sat on the front porch being like, oh, my dad's coming and he's really awesome. And he's in the special forces and he's a doctor and and he's a baseball <laughs> player and he's going to come. He's coming around the corner. Come soon. You guys can hang out with yeah, him. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. He's going to be got, he's going to bring candy. He's got that's, oh, that's the Santa story right there. It's the Santa story. It's it's but in my opinion, it's even sadder. It's just absentee fatherism taken to You're a right. spiritual yeah, yeah. level. Yeah. We all have the capacity yeah. for it. That's all I'm saying is like we. It, <clears throat> It's this, it's the part of the human condition to want more than what we have. It's just natural. You know, or to have, I mean, we all grew up and we had mm -hmm. parents. Um, and and to, to lose the parents and not have an authority figure in our, our life, it's a, it's a great loss. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people can never get past that. So they turn to religion to have a father figure there mm -hmm. uh, they, and to gain a, a complete family. The father, the sisters, you know, the nuns, the brothers of the, the conversation. Con congregation uh you know and it's yeah. another whole family i mean they sell the concept of family in the church as well as well plus there's always oh, of course. a fear of death right? the in group the mm -hmm. one thing you will Tribalism. do if you can hear yeah. this show the one thing you will do is die and that could be scary for a lot of people who haven't come to terms with that and if you live in a society like ours you're oftentimes never given the opportunity to because you always mm -hmm. are forced to have an answer and not think about things that are coming up down the road. So I understand. I understand. Yeah. Dude, I speak sign language. I got it. I get it, Larry. I get it, Larry. But my main thing... Remember uh, Epicurus? Epicurus had very good thought about death. He said, he, he said you know, I'm paraphrasing. Um, death is the one thing you will never experience. Because when you die, you won't know it. There'll be nothing to regret, nothing to remember. It just, it's the one thing that will not happen to you. So there's no point worrying about it. Right. 
That's mm-hmm. that's the that's the frame of mind I put myself in. My other my yeah. other top it won't line matter. Is, I wouldn't want to worship, I wouldn't want to worship a god that would punish me for being intellectually honest or expect me to worship him. And if there is no god, then I haven't lost anything and if there was a god that wanted me to worship him under punishment if I don't, that would have been a god I want to worship anyway. Yeah. And if there was a god who was yeah. cool with it with my my state of mind, then I'd be like, "Oh, you were the you were the one that was cool to begin with at the beginning." So like I'm all good with regard to like my spiritual yeah. existence. I don't yeah. need anything else beyond that. Larry, yeah. we're sorry for taking up your time. He's literally cutting his head off. What's up? Let's take it out to no. the end of the show. Yeah, Welcome at the end you. of the show, we need the uh, last words. Welcome to the end of the show. That was my last words. Larry, <laughs> take us out. Oh, Dred, what are your last words? Uh, my last words are ramen. 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 Okay, that'll work. Eat pasta. <laughs> Eat pasta um, be happy. Just a reminder, you can find this show on podcasts everywhere. Just search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. If you're having trouble re- leaving religious beliefs behind, you can find help at recoveringfromreligion.org. My content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. And be sure to click on the blog button for radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. Uh, my YouTube handle is Doubter5. You can buy my book. You can find my book at Amazon. It's called Atheism, What's It All About? Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock on WOZO Radio. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye.